Today's message calls into question our resolve. It challenges our perspective of life and our commitment to the calls of Christ. I want to challenge you today. Um, this is one of those messages that, I, that uh, uh, is not directed to your neighbor. I am talking to you, and I want you to give God your undivided attention. Question your resolve in serving the Lord and how you see life and our commitment to Christ and to the cause. Of Christ. It questions where we are now, opposed to where we were then. Revelations 2 and 4, the Lord said to the church at Ephesus, after commending them, he says, I still have somewhat against thee. I've got something against you. He says, because you've left your first love. Amen. Before I go any further, I want to commend this choir today. Amen. Amen. Good job. Well done. Amen. The intergenerational choir. And um, um, again, to, to, to hear all of this singing and singing those Zion songs. And, and to see Father, Son on the same stage. And... Uh, all of the Sister Thomas and uh, Sister Wanda Crisp and Brother Thomas, Elder Amanchuku and John, Little John, John Patrick, singing those Zion songs. And then the choir under the direction of the Rock, Rocky Rayford. Job well done. But it said in Revelations 2 and 4, I have something against you. You have, uh, you've left your first love. That is, the church at Ephesus, it's not that you don't love me, but it, it is that you don't love me like you used to love me. You know. How do you feel about Jesus today? Opposed to how you felt about Jesus five years ago or 10 years ago, or 10 months ago? Do you love him? Are you as excited about the things of God today? And this is, uh, this is an honest assessment of one's self. You have to let this thing sink in and, and, and question yourself. Have you, have servitude in the church caused you to grow? Have you grown critical? and cynical? Have you become a censorous believer? A critical person? Self-righteous? Ain't nobody saved now but you. Amen. And do you still have your joy? Y'all don't hear me. Like you had it when you first started. Where are you? Praise the Lord. What, what shape have years of servitude left you in? Where are you? Amen. This message asks, are we as determined to be holy, to be different, to be saved, and to be Christian as we were when we first believed? The definition, by definition, uh, to deter someone is to keep or to discourage a person or group or nation from doing something by instilling fear, anxiety, and doubt. The clan 
discouraged blacks from voting by lighting crosses and riding through the neighborhood and uh, terrorizing citizens of a darker hue. And their uh, wicked ways kept many home and um, drive through and shoot people. And somebody, God moved on somebody and they started a group called the NRA, the National Rifle Association. And the NRA uh, delivered guns to black folk. And one day the Klan drove in and shot. And guess what happened? The black folk fired back. So much for the claim. It began, the tide began to turn. Too many, too many people up in the coast. The tide began to turn. Are you with me? But they were, the people were intimidated. Amen. It goes without being said that deterrence in and of itself is neither good nor bad. It's not, it's not evil or right or wrong, it depends on what we're being deterred from. Fear of financial ruin, fear of bad health, loss of life or limb, the destruction of one's life work, the deterioration of one's marriage, the loss of one's soul, are legitimate and wise deterrents. Amen. You ought not to want to end up financially ruined. I don't know of anybody who wants to go into bad health, do you? And I certainly want to live as long as I can, and I want to keep all of my limbs. So there are things that I do. I, I don't want to lose my life's work. I don't want to lose that. I don't want my marriage to deteriorate. So there are actions that are taken to prevent these things. One of the uh, most legitimate deterrents that I've ever read to uh, alcoholism and to drinking is found in Proverbs chapter 23. I was a much for drinking before I got saved. But after I read this, I said, that's it. I'm not going to drink. I don't care who drinks. I'm not drinking. I'm not going to be a casual drink a drinker or every now and again drinker. I'm not drinking. Proverbs 23 and 29 says, Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who have contentions? Whose life is filled with conflicts? Conflict. Who have babblings? Whose life is filled with complaints? Who have wounds without cause? Who, who wake up and they're cut, beaten, and bruised and don't know how they got it? Don't know what happened. Who have redness of eyes? Who? He says, they that tarry long at wine, at the wine. Do you see that? Oh, my. They that habitually drink. And I want to say this. Every alcoholic, every alcoholic, every person, every drunk driver, every person who has taken another person's life while drunk. Every problem that a drunk has, every one of them started out as casual drinkers. See, nobody's born a drunk. And the drunk didn't drink to become a drunk. The drunk took his problem his first drink because he wanted to be cool. He thought he could handle it. The Bible says, Wine is a mocker, and they who are deceived thereby 
are not wise. That is, tricked into thinking that you can handle it. Well, he says, who have all these problems? They that tarry long and wine. Uh, and then let's throw beer in it. And they that go, that seek mixed wine. Says, look not upon wine when it is red. That is, don't even, much less drink it. Don't, uh, don't even look at it when it is fermented. Y'all not to have wine in your house. When it is fermented, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. Oh my. He's dealing, what he's talking about now is wine tasting. There you go. Oh, you're cool with it. Shake it up, you know. Wow, that wine is in that glass. Oh, my. See, you're, 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 that's your future right there. It looks good right there in the cup. That's your whole, that's tomorrow. That, right there, your whole career. It, it, it looks good. Skid row. He says, you know what you do to avoid it? Don't even look at it. Don't, 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 don't buy it. Don't, don't have anything to do with it. Because uh, uh, it, it tells you how it works. At the last, it biteth like a serpent. You don't see it when it hooks you. You don't see it when it hooks you. I, tell, I say to people who smoke, you don't know which puff is going to give you cancer. As you inhale those carcinogens and those poisons into your lungs, you never know which one. I was watching a report today, you marijuana... Uh, advocates and uh, and they were talking uh, a doctor a doctor was talking about a long-term study that shows that people who uh, use marijuana uh, recreationally over a long term uh, among the things they develop is a vomiting disorder and they 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 began to vomit a lot and if that's the future you want puff on praise the lord but you, you'll be where you can't hold your food down that stuff is it's not good. And anybody who's, uh, you know, I, I don't even like the arguments for uh, legalizing it. You know, uh, it will help African Americans if we legalize it. Because we get locked up for, for, for smoking it. And so many black folk are disproportionately locked up. Like we have a smoke marijuana gene. Do, do you have to do it? Uh, are you, do you mean to tell me that we are so unwise as a people that you got, you got to take the, uh, the, the punitiveness out of a thing, take the punishment out, because what you're saying is we can't come up to normal standards. We, we, we can't overcome, so you have to make it legal. What an insult. What an insult. We're, we're not for IDs because it disproportionately affects our people. Like black folk can't get an ID in this day and time. That, I mean, that's an insult. That's an insult. That's an insult. But what about that old, old mother who's collecting her social security? She, she can't, she's old and she can't get to the place to get a, uh, uh, an ID. How did she get that check? And how does she cash that check? Whatever she uses. There's something that she's doing that says she has something that says this is Mama June or Miss Maggie May. She's got something. That's an ID. She has something. We're, we're wiser than that. Challenging your thinking. We're wiser than that. We're smarter than that. Well, that's good stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make it legal. This this wine, it bites like a serpent. It stings like an adder. 
Thine eyes shall behold strange women. It makes you behave when you're high, when you're under the influence of stuff. Whether it's drinking, drugs, under the influence. You do things that you normally would not do. I want to say to all the sisters in school, all you young sisters, stay sober. Amen. It's to your advantage to keep your wits about you because you can wake up from the party and 30 days later, everything is different. He's gone. And now you're in a position where you got to uh, make some tough decisions. Sometimes people behave in ways that they normally would not. And, and notice what the text does. It doesn't just warn the women. It, it's warning to the man. It says, uh, thine eyes behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. The things that people say under the influence. The things that come out of our mouths under the influence. That would preach right there. Under the influence. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea. Listen, in the midst of the sea, you, 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 you're lying down in a place that has no structure. You're falling in something that's going to engulf you. You go from being an intelligent person and, and, and having a life of structure to falling into Horrible situations. Are you with me? You're in the, it's like falling into the heart of the sea. What happens when you fall into the heart of the sea? You drown. If you fall on the ground, you can get back up. But if you fall into the heart of the sea, it's over. Under the influence. You wake up and your career is gone. One night. And you know, we live in a society now where everybody uh, is a walking CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, these, these the, 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 the devices. Are you with me today? I'm going to preach in just a moment, but I want you, I want you to think about things. I like to challenge you. I like to make you think. Amen. Some things I preach is hard to hear. We're, we're, we're accustomed to now uh, to going to church hearing whatever we want to hear, the soft things. But I want to make you think. Because uh, the truth is, I told them in leadership today, life offers very few true do-overs. Doesn't take but a minute for you to do a thing that can mess your life up. While drunk, you lie in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mask. That is, you do absurd things. You can't lie down on the top of the mask of a, of a boat because there's no place to lay. You lie down up there, you're going to fall. Sin, one preacher said, makes you stupid. It makes us do things that we would not ordinarily do. They have, and then he says, they have stricken me, shall thou say. You wake up and say, they beat me. And they've stricken me, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. And when I shall awake, guess what? I will seek it yet again. That is, when I sober up, I can't wait to go get drunk again. What a deterrence to drinking. The Bible warns against being lazy. Proverbs 20 and 4 says, The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. That is, the sluggard uh, is the lazy person, is the person who makes excuses. Therefore, he shall beg in harvest. And guess what? And have nothing. And what's interesting here is the Bible puts a period behind that. It didn't say, and have nothing, so all, all the rest of the taxpayers come and give you something. 
the scripture leave you with having nothing because when it was time to sow, because it was cold, you stayed home. Because it was inconvenience, inconvenient, you wouldn't work. All right? It was cold. It was cold to everybody. That, that, that cold day when it was time to sow the seed, it was cold all over time. It was cold on the other people's side of town. But they wrapped up and went out in the cold and went to work and sowed those seeds in the cold. It was cold for everybody. All right, now the season's passed, and now it's harvest time. Guess what? The people who sowed when it was cold had something to harvest. But the person who stayed in when it was cold because they didn't feel like it, uh, I don't see why I have to go out there and catch a cold. I don't see why I have to work so hard. The person who stayed in, now it's harvest time, and guess what? They don't have anything. Well, the people who went out, who went out there, uh, in the cold said, don't look in my field. <laughs> don't look, don't look over here because you would not work. Saints, everybody wants to have something when it's time to have something. I tell young people all the time, the day will come, you may not hear me today, but the day will come when you'll want to be somebody. The day will come when you'll want to have something. The day will come when you will want to get ahead. You will, it won't just happen then if you hadn't prepared yourself now. So I want to say to the youth, high school students, junior high school, junior high students, college students, don't, don't party your way through college. Don't party your way. So when you Graduated with 1.1. Don't party your way. You might have went and got a job somewhere. Don't party your way. Learn something. Take advantage of the opportunity because it's going to pay off down the road. You may not, you may not be the most popular uh, on the campus, but you may end up being the most popular in life because you did the work. At the time. I've, I've got to move on from this. But let me just. I want to show you one. Verse 13 says. Love not sleep. Lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes. And thou shall be satisfied with bread. Wake up. Get 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 up. You're sleeping your way to poverty. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Man ought to beat the alarm. When the alarm go off, your eyes ought to be open. Just reach over there. Take, get up, get up, get up. Lest you come to poverty. The Lord doesn't want you in poverty. But the cure to poverty is not giving an offering. The cure to poverty is not uh, some religious chant. Preachers say, if you just say this, you'll never uh, be in poverty. The cure to poverty is get up. Your daddy said, get, 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 get up. If you're on the Lord's side, you got to get up. And said, and, and open your eyes. Oh, I'm preaching good. Open your eyes, work, so you'll be satisfied with bread. So you can have your refrigerators filled. Grandkids come over, you can feed them. Family come, you have something to give them. Amen. Be able to enjoy the blessings of life, the yielding of the ground. But in order to enjoy it, you've got to be willing to work. Isn't this something? This doesn't seem like a Sunday morning message. It may not be, but it's a good Monday morning message. Get up. Get up. Amen. You have a future. Good things are waiting for you. There ain't no, there's no harvest in your bed. Mm. One of the greatest deterrents to, uh, uh, to um, keeping your head right is Proverbs 18 and 14. It says, the spirit of a man will sustain him. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? 
the spirit of a man. It shows health. Spiritual health leads to a healthy body. And a jaded, broken spirit leads to sickness. Amen. Don't let the thing linger in your head too long. Forgive that person. Forgive that person. Let that, let that thing go. Let that hurt go. Let it go. Forgive mama. Forgive daddy. Forgive this one. Let it go. Don't harbor ill will and stuff like that in your heart. It will make you sick. I just can't forgive him. I just can't let it go. I just can't. It's going to kill you. It makes you unattractive. Amen. Listen, I, I, listen it, it happens. Not everybody's marriage make it. But now uh, you got to forgive that ex so you can be happy with your, with your new one. Amen. Amen. There's some people, you married, you, you got divorced, and you remarried, but, you, but you're still angry at the first wife or the first husband. You're still angry with the person who cheated on you, and now you're taking it out on the person who you're currently married to. And your relationship don't stand a chance because you're fighting a ghost. And that person is gone. Sometimes they even know, sometimes they're dead. Sometimes they've married and moved on. You got to know how. You got to know how to move on. If you don't move on, it will make you sick. And, amen. Amen. And, and just, just a desire to be healthy and a desire to live says, let it go. Let it go so that I can be somebody. The Bible teaches us in Proverbs 14 and 16, a wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool regard and is confident. A wise person understands if I stay in this too long, it's going to destroy me. So a deterrent to being destroyed causes the wise person to straighten up. Lord, I messed up. Lord, I fell short. I'm not going to stay in this. I'm coming out. I'm coming out while I'm getting out while the getting is good. Have you ever heard the old uh, maxim, you went to the well one time too many? Don't go to the well one time too many. Accept God's grace and get out while the getting is good. A good deterrent to going at it alone with uh, uh, to not getting advice. The Bible says without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counsel, they are established. Talk to somebody. Get help. Amen. Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 23, I don't know why I'm just staying here. It says in all labor... There is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. People who work make the money. Talkers don't get anywhere. Five times as a deterrent to being lost. Five times in the Bible, our Lord references, says this about hell. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Five times. He keeps repeating it. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. Oh, I know that Hollywood says and, 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 uh, and the, the music industry, you hear people say, when we get to hell, we're going to have a party down there. No, no, there'll be no partying in hell. And there is a literal hell. I'm, all, I'm, I'm amazed at people who believe that there's a literal heaven, but they don't believe there's a literal, literal hell. And the same Jesus who spoke of heaven spoke of hell. In fact, he talked of hell, about hell more than he did heaven. There is a literal place called hell. A place where disembodied spirits go. 
place where the dead go who die without Christ. Their spirits go there and they are tormented there. It is not, however, a final des des uh, destination. Hell is not eternal. Hell has a time limit. Amen. That's what the Bible teaches. So when you go to hell, you're there forever. No. The Bible says in Revelations chapter 20 and verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which was in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. This is, uh, and death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. What am I saying? There's a place worse than hell. And you'll leave hell and go to the lake of fire, which is worse than hell. And the lake of fire burneth forever. You're talking about a determined. You're talking about a get it right with God and do it now. Let's get saved. Let's serve the Lord. Because I want to see Jesus. And I want to see Jesus in peace. I don't want to go to a place where I'm crying and gnashing my teeth due to the pain and the torment. The stench is called the bottomless pit. It is compared to a trash pile, Gehenna, a trash pile filled with feces and the city dump set on fire, filled with maggots. That's what Jesus describes hell as called it Gehenna, the city dump, the city sewer on fire. I don't want to go to a place like that. And all we have to do to avoid these things is to give our hearts to the Lord. But none of these things matter if your perspective in life is not where it should be. If you don't care about being a success, if, you don't, if it doesn't matter to you whether you live a life of honor, if promotion isn't something that you're necessarily concerned about, if godliness and going to heaven and avoiding hell is something that you're not, it doesn't really matter to you, it will, but if you think that now, then the things I've said to you have just been a waste of time. You're hoping that I get finished because even though you have to admit that I'm reading scripture, you're not really concerned about those things. It depends on your perspective. It depends on your outlook. Some people put self-preservation here above all else. The Apostle Paul didn't. When he wrote our text, Paul didn't know that he had only 10 more years at the most to live. That in 10 years from the time that he said in verse 24 that I might finish my course, 10 years later he would be writing in 2 Timothy chapter 2, Chapter 4 and verse 7, while facing Nero's chopping block, he would say, I have fought a good fight, and I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Isn't that something? Amen. Paul in our text said this, uh, verse 24, neither count I my life dear to myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. Praise the Lord. One of the keys to having joy in life is not being so self-centered. The self-centered are the most miserable people of them all. Self-centered people are the most depressed people. See, when you're self-centered, you, you, you only see life from one perspective. And that is how life affects you. Who did you wrong? Who hurt your feelings? Who dismissed you? Who didn't treat you right? It's all about you. You're the center. You're the center. 
So that, that explains why you don't have joy when you should have it. One of the keys to having joy is living a life of altruism, a life of selflessness. Praise the Lord. Get dedicated to something that the Lord has given you to do. And you know what? That depression will lift. It will go away. Praise the Lord. One of the worst things you can do when feeling depressed is to stay home. Stop going out. Stop being social. Stop going to church. Get isolated. Stay away from it. And now, stay away from people. And now, your mind becomes an echo chamber. And all you see and all you think about is what you're depressed about. And so therefore, it, it, is, it, it, gets, it goes from worse to worse because you get bombarded with all of these negative thoughts. And they cause you to be a defeated individual. Paul says, I do not count my life dear to myself. In this farewell address, praise the Lord. The first thing Paul does in our text is he gives an account of his own ministry and behavior. The believers said this. He says, upon landing at Miletus, Paul sent word to the elders in Ephesus, asking them to come for a meeting. Undoubtedly, it took considerable time for the message to reach them and for them to make the journey south. However, they were well rewarded by the magnificent message they heard from the lips of the great apostle. In it, we have a valuable portrait of an ideal servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. We see a man who was fanatically devoted to the Savior. He labored in season and out of season. He was tireless, indomitable, and indefeatable. He was marked by true humility. No cost was too great for him to pay. His ministry was the result of, deep ex of the deep exercise of his soul. He had a holy boldness and a fearlessness. Whether he lived or died was not important. But what was important was that the will of God should be carried out and that the men should and that men should hear the gospel. He was unselfish in all that he did. He would rather give than receive. He was undaunted by difficulties. He practiced what he preached. End of quote. He said in Verse 17, he called the elders from Miletus and said, when they got there, verse 18 says, and when they were come to him, he said unto them, you know from the first day that I came to Asia until now what manner I have been with you at all seasons. You know how I have lived my life. First, he puts the emphasis on his own behavior. And how he lived, serving the Lord with humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the laying on of weight by the Jews. He said, these Judaizers worked to destroy me. They tried to undermine me, but I continued. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. I gave you the word of the Lord and have showed you. He says, not only, I love this. He says, I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you and have showed you, that is by example, and have taught you, that is by mouth. See, we got to live it and teach it. I should get a strong amen there. Many of us can say it, but we can't do it. Amen. It's better to be able to do and not say than to say and not do. Now, what's optimum is to be able to preach it and live it. And to win the world, we're going to have to preach it and live it. Amen. Folk are looking for Christians who will be real. And Paul said, I taught you publicly in the synagogue, and I went from house to house. There was not a house in Miletus. There was not a house uh, in the area that Paul had not visited. Was not, there was not a house 
in Ephesus that didn't get a visit from this man of God. And what did he do? Testifying both to the Jews and to the Greeks. To Paul, every man was a mission field. To Paul, everyone he met was an opportunity to share the gospel. Oh my, help us, Lord. Whether it was a Jew or a Greek, Jew or a Gentile, Paul shared the gospel and he brought up the two things that's necessary for salvation. You can't have salvation without repentance and without faith. He, he taught them repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. To repent is to turn. To serve the Lord, you got to be willing to turn from what you were doing. Amen. We live in a day now where you can get saved and still do what you were doing before you come to Christ. But true salvation incorporates repentance. And then it's faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You can't be saved without believing on Jesus Christ. No one can save us but Jesus. Now in, in this second section, Paul turns his attention to his travel plans. He says, now I'm, I'm going to Jerusalem. And he says, now the reason I'm going to Jerusalem is that I am bound, verse 22, in my spirit to go to Jerusalem. Word bound there literally means compelled. The Holy Ghost put it in him. Go to Jerusalem. 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 Go to Jerusalem. Lord, put it in his spirit. Jerusalem. Go to Jerusalem. Thank you, Jesus. He says, I'm bound. I'm compelled in my spirit. And he says, and, and, uh, and, and, and notice this now. Notice this. He admits that he's not sure of what awaits him in Jerusalem. See, most of us, before we obey God, we want too many guarantees. He's got to promise you that, you, you, that nothing bad will happen. He's got to promise you that it's all going to work. He's got to promise you that it won't cost you a thing. He's got to promise you, oh, that you'll have a huge anniversary by your third year. Paul says, I don't know what's going to happen. All I know is that the Lord has put on my heart to go to Jerusalem. I don't know, but here's what I do know is that Everywhere I go, people are telling me that afflictions lie ahead. They're telling me that trouble is up the road for me in Jerusalem, but the Lord is telling me, go to Jerusalem. We serve a God who will sometimes send you into the fire. I've often asked the Lord, Lord, why you want me to say these things? Why, don't, why not let the other guy say it? God says, because I raised you up. This is what I called you for. You say what I tell you to say. You are, you, are, you are not to be responsible for the response. If they get mad, let them. If they get glad, let them. But you say what I tell you to say. Praise the Lord. And, and as believers, we've got to be willing, praise the Lord, to lay it all on the line. Not knowing. Not knowing what's going to happen. You don't know who's going to stand by you. And you don't know who will not. You don't know, praise the Lord, what the weather will be like. Good God Almighty, you don't know if the city is going to receive you or not. But you have to obey the Lord. Are you with me? He said, I'm not sure. I don't know what lie ahead. But I tell you what, he's got, he's got plenty of messages from the Holy Ghost. Uh, when you read in chapter 21, you see where... Uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to Paul in 21 and verse 4. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days who said to Paul through the Spirit. The word Spirit is capitalized. So that's the Holy Spirit. That he should not go up to Jerusalem. Now, now he says in, verse, in chapter 20 and, uh, and in verse, uh, in our text, verse 22, he says, I'm bound by the Spirit. In the spirit. 
to go to Jerusalem. But we see here in chapter 21, verse 4, they're saying, don't go. And then if you look over here, praise the Lord, in verse 10 of chapter 21, and he says, as we tarried there many days, I'm almost done, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come down to us, uh, he took Paul's girdle, he took his belt, and bound his own hands, his own hands and his own feet, and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews do, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this belt, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him that he should not go up to Jerusalem. He says, Paul, don't go. Don't go because if you go, uh, the Agabus didn't know that this was your belt. And he's telling us that if you go, you're going to get bound and the Jews are going to turn you over to the Gentiles. But Paul was a different kind of man. Paul answered, verse 13 of chapter 21, the book of Acts. Paul then answered, uh, then Paul answered, What meaneth ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, what a man, what a man. He says, I'm not just willing to suffer, I'm willing to die. And, he, and when he would not be persuaded, when he would not be moved, when he would not let them change his mind. Oh, my. Oh, young lady, don't let that young man change your mind. Young man, don't let that lady change your mind. Don't let anybody talk you out of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I'm not going to change my mind. Good God Almighty, when they could not persuade him, because the devil is always trying to persuade us. It says, and when, when he would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, the will of the Lord be done. Good God Almighty. Said, well, he's not going to listen, so we're going to have to just leave him in the hand of the Lord. Paul wasn't being disobedient to the Holy Spirit. But Paul interpreted what the Spirit uh, was saying. His interpretation was that the Spirit is letting me know that this is not going to be a cakewalk. The Spirit is letting me know that I'm headed into a time of trouble, but I still have to go. Good God Almighty, the Holy Ghost will let you know that it's not necessarily going to be easy. But the Lord will see you through. Mm, I thank God that he knows how. Praise the Lord to warn you. There have been things that I've done, that I've done for the Lord, that after I obeyed God, I, I sat out by myself and sat there and I felt the storm crowds brewing. I could feel the kick push back coming. And I said to the Lord, God, I've obeyed you. And I know that the devil is coming after me as a result of what I've said. And the Lord said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of you. Good God Almighty. I'm glad we serve a God who knows how to take care of you. And I heard Paul said, even though they're telling me that trouble is up ahead. Paul said, I don't have but one response. None of these things move me. Hallelujah. Henry said he did not lay those things to heart because Christ and heaven was already there. They did not drive him off from his work and they didn't make him tack about. They didn't make him zigzag. He didn't go back when he saw the storm rise. But he went on resolutely. He said, I've started with Jesus and I'm going through. They did not deprive him of his comfort. 
and in the midst of troubles he was as one who was unconcerned he didn't increase his prayer life and he didn't decrease his prayer life he didn't increase his fasting and it didn't decrease his fasting. His position was, um, none of these things move me. See, when you're not moved, it won't shake you. Hallelujah. It won't make you have to do something extra because you already have um, your blessed assurance uh, that the Bible is right. Somebody stopped me one day and said to me, Preacher, we need to have a conference. We need to go back and see what the Bible said about this subject or that subject. And I looked at him and I said, I don't need to have another conference because I've already read the Bible and I know what God said and he has not changed change his mind see when the things don't move you you don't have to go back to the Lord and ask the Lord are you still up there ask the Lord are you still on the throne ask the Lord are you still real I come to tell you through the storms of life good God Almighty my God is real he's real he's as real in the storm as he is in the sunshine he's as real when things are going against me as he is when things are going going my way i come to tell you today don't be moved by the opposition of the devil you got to look at life from a higher perspective you got to see that your life is in the hands of the Lord and that the God of the Bible is a mighty good keeper. He's a way maker and that he's already made a way for you. Rebuke that fear. Tell the devil you won't shake me. You won't rob me of my praise. Just last week, Sister Johnson came to me good God almighty and uh, I said to her how you doing and she said she was fine thank you Jesus and I said to her I want to pray she said I have a condition they tell me that I may have that C word I said well God is he's a healer and he's a way maker I'm gonna pray for you and I said now don't you worry go your way I thank God that she came back a week later and said pastor no cancer in my body ain't the Lord good won't the Lord make a way yeah yes I'm glad to be able to tell you that in 2019, none of those things move me. The afflictions of the devil, they hadn't changed my mind. The attacks of the enemy, they hadn't changed my mind. Good God Almighty, I've seen some dark days. I've seen some hard times. I know what it is to be forsaken, to be misunderstood, to have my feelings hurt, oh Lord. But oh, oh I know that my God is real and the fire is still in my soul. My mind is still made up. Oh, oh. I wonder today, is there anybody here who can say, Pastor, I too have been through a few things. I've been through the storm. I've been through the rain. I've been up and I've been down. I've been leveled to the ground. But oh, none of those things move me. I'm still sold out. I'm 
still saved. I still have a mind to serve the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I still have a mind. Oh, I got a mind. A mind to succeed. A mind to be real. If they close the doors in my face, I'll just ring another doorbell. For if I keep on trying, the Lord will. He will deliver. He will bring me out. He will take care of me. Won't he do it? Say yeah. Say yeah. Oh, Lord. Somebody praise him in here. Somebody praise him in here. And shout I'm not moved. Hallelujah. I'm not moved. I'm not moved. I'm not deterred. Still saved. Yet saved. Still have a shout. Yet have a praise. I still have a made up mind. Still going to serve the Lord with my whole heart. Still going all the way. Good God Almighty. Are you, you still saved? Yes, sir. You still believe the Bible? Yes! You still believe holiness is right? Yes! You still at the holiness church? Yes! You still at upper room? Yes! You still feel the same way that, 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 that we used to feel about all of these social issues? You still believe that a man ought to marry a woman? Yes! You still believe, hallelujah, that the life of the unborn is precious? Yes! Do you still believe that the Bible is the only written, infallible word of God? Somebody say yeah! Say yeah! I still believe, oh yes I do, oh, oh yes I do. None of these things move me. Where are you going, Paul? Where are you headed? To Jerusalem. But what about all that you've heard? I'm unmoved. I'm undeterred. I'm still going to follow the Lord. What about you? Oh, there's pressure now. Media pressure. Social pressure. Pressure. Pressure from family. Pressure. Hallelujah. As society changes, these things have implications in more and more of life. Oh my, you have to deal with certain things. They show up now where they didn't show up before. Whereas before it didn't affect you, now it does. What I want to know is, are you still determined? Praise the Lord. Are you still, hallelujah, determined? To walk with Jesus, to be saved, to be that believer that the Lord is calling for. Oh, it's tight, but it's right. Oh, it's tight, it's tight, it's tight, but it, but it takes tightness. You hear me, young folk? I know I sound hard, but you know, you, you in college, you, you got to get to where I am. I, I, I'm a winner. I'm telling you how to be one. Say amen. Praise the Lord. You, 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 got to, you got to be willing to hear the word of the Lord. Hear from these mothers. Hear from these fathers who've been in this thing a long time and who are not tired yet. I like what Clarence did today, uh, a call and response. We used to sing, I've been running for Jesus for a long time. 
I'm not tired yet. Then sometimes the old church mother starts singing, and she's not tired yet. She, she's in her 70s, and she's not tired. Somebody that's 85, and they're not tired. That's say, you know what he said to young me who had just got saved? If she can run. If standing out looking at Mother Williams, Mother Turner, looking at all those mothers, and they aren't tired yet. And I know they, they came up in an America that was much harder than this one. Then I'm standing here on the sideline. I'm, I'm ashamed to admit it. I, 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 I take it back. I, I had whispered to, to one of the brothers. I, I had kind of whispered in Wardell's ear, man, I'm tired. I'm tired. Then all of a sudden, been running for Jesus for a long time. I'm not tired yet. And I heard the old mothers, then I said, you know what? I can't afford to be tired. How can I be tired? They're not tired. You know what they were saying? You know what they were saying? Undeterred. Unmoved. See, I've been running for Jesus for a long time. It's cold. It's cold for, I've been through a lot. But I stayed in the church. It's cold. Had, had, Got, got, been hurt a few times, but I stayed in the church. Abandoned and forsaken, but I stayed in the church. Well, but what, what, what shape are you in? I'm not tired yet. Not jaded, not defeated, not mad. Praise the Lord. Unmoved. Unmoved. None of these things. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray for you, you, and especially you. Hallelujah. I want to pray that the Lord gives you that Holy Ghost resolve. Good God Almighty. That resolve, the resolve to go all the way, the resolve. Because life, in life, there are some blows. Life can hit you. Life can hit you. Warriors, saints, frontline Christians, you can't get tired. Pray for me, preacher. Pray. Devil, devil been trying to claw at my mind. Pray for me. Enemy's been trying to slip in. Pray for me. Hallelujah. Pray for me. Pray for me. I want you to be able one day to stand up and say, I've been through the storms. And I've been through the rain. But the Lord stood by my side. Oh, Lord. By my side. By my side. The Lord. Stood by my side, oh, oh, by my side, by my side, the Lord stood by my side. Well, 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 oh, the Lord stood by my side. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad the Lord Woo! stood by my side. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Lord stood by me, stood by me, yeah. Oh, Lord. Will there be another? Pray for me, preacher. Pray that my mind stay right. Don't grow away from the Lord. It makes no sense. But grow up in him. Grow up in him. Ever reach out to them college girls. They never heard any preacher like that before. It was heavy. They'll be all right. Teach them how to be winners. They've been listening to all that liberal mess. That was wrong with them now. You can't get nowhere on that stuff. Can't get anywhere, but black folk falling behind. 
I'm teaching you how to win, how to be strong. Oh, Lord. Oh. You know, you have to fight us to teach us. Glory to God. 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 I'm coming against that thing clawing at your mind. And sometimes that thing is, is manifested as a person. Somebody trying to pull you astray. Don't you go there. Ten more people need to be on this altar trying to pull you out of the ark of safety. Don't you leave. And you know what? You can't let what you see move you. All right, you found out mom and daddy, the house ain't like you thought it was. The marriage ain't as tight as you thought it was. I guess I'm going to leave the law. You can, uh -uh. can't let that move you. Can't let that move you either. But what can move me? Nothing. You gotta stay on, you gotta stay on track. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to pray. And if you're coming, come on. God's waiting for you. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory. Oh, I'm not hesitating because the altar is not full, because it is. But there's somebody else. The devil is trying to pull you astray. Hallelujah. Your praise is not like it was. Can't let it move you. Can't let it move you. Paul said, none of these things move me. They, none of the things made me run faster or slower. It had no effect. No effect. That's, that's amazing. No effect. No effect. Hallelujah. Well, at our church, we don't celebrate uh, Halloween, but what we do is we let our children uh, dress up as angels. That means you participated. It had an effect. When there's no effect, you ignore it. That's no effect. So what did you do different? Nothing. Why? Because it has no effect. No meaning. Nothing. People are still coming. I'm getting ready to pray. I'm getting ready to pray. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. No effect. Somebody clap your hands for Jesus and praise the Lord right now. I want you right now, the way, the way to keep the thing from having the effect is spiritually, you got to dismiss it. You got to count it, oh my God, as nothing and give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Oh, it takes growth to do that. It takes growth. But see, the, 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 today's message sets you on the path. Somebody's going to do it all together. But it sets you on the path to dismissing the distractions of the enemy and flowing with the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today. Lord God, we want that mind that Paul had. But in order for him to have that mind, he put something, something that was more valuable and more dear to him than life itself. And that was the will of the Lord. The will of the Lord. The will of the Lord. It meant more to him than self-preservation. It meant more to him than self-welfare. He put your will above all else. So when the threat came that he may get hurt or that his life may uh, he may have to suffer some uncomfortable things or that he may lose his life altogether. He was able to dismiss the, the threats because he put you first. Here we are, Lord. 
on the altar today. In the name of Jesus, here we are, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We want that mind where we're not affected by every little thing. We keep looking right and left. It's too easy for the devil to get our attention. It's too easy for the enemy to get a, a reaction out of us. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The hand of God is against you. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke you from our minds. We rebuke you from our head. Hallelujah. We replace you with the will of God. We replace you with the priorities of the Savior. We put our lives in the Lord's hand. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We stand today to declare that we're not moved. We're not moved. We're going to pray anyway. We're not moved. We're going to fast anyhow. We're not moved. We're going to live holy regardless. We're not moved. We're coming out in the name of Jesus. We're not moved. The devil, thank you, Jesus, can't have us. You can't have my mind. You won't disturb my sleep. You won't stop me in the name of Jesus. But oh God, we're glad to have that mind to move forward in Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody tell him yes. Somebody tell him yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Undisturbed undeterred in the name of Jesus heaven is my goal heaven is my goal obeying the Lord is what I live for heaven is my goal thank you Jesus I want to please you Lord hallelujah want to be who you said said I should be if I have to stand alone I'll do that if I have to go by myself I'll do that Whatever, Lord, I want to please you. I can't be persuaded by mom and daddy, sister and brother, personal things. Can't be dissuaded, can't be deterred by the attack of the enemy. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I shall not be moved in the name of Jesus. I shall not be moved. Hallelujah. I shall not be moved. I'm like a tree planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Keep me, Jesus. 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 Keep me, Jesus.
That's right. Keep telling him thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Somebody tell God thank you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, doing soul work here today. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. I'm not going to be moved. Not going to be moved. Hallelujah. When I said in the sermon that Paul did not tack, T-A-C-K, around. To tack around, it's a zigzag. Here, there, here, there. You've been too zigzaggy. God don't call you to zigzag. God calls you to go straight. See what I'm saying? Can't be over here a little bit. Then over here a little bit. You won't get anywhere. That's, that's, when you zigzag through life, it takes you forever to get out the door. Versus the man who goes straight. God wants you to go straight. 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 So you develop. You develop. That pattern with the Lord of straightness, you develop that, your life will never be the same. See, as a man, you can't be all over the place. You have to set your course and stay on it. Don't get deterred just because some girl smile at you. Set your course and stay on it. Don't get deterred. Because somebody hurt your feelings. Don't, don't believe. Bible says believe not every spirit. You can't trust everything that comes to your mind. If it's contrary to the, what God has put in your spirit. You have to ignore that thing. And go straight. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Not move. Not move. I move. I pray for the minds of the saints. Pray for the minds of the saints. The mind of the saints. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. The mind. Woo! In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. You will no longer. I will not be moved. I will not be moved. I, 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 I had to adjust in my own mind. I, I couldn't be moved by the side of town that I came up in. I had to dismiss those things. I couldn't let my disadvantages just weigh on my mind. I couldn't let the conflicts just stay on my mind. I had to learn to ignore those things. Uh, the, the scripture says, you set your face like flint. <laughs> you set yourself. And you go in that direction. And when the enemy try to knock you off course, you don't let him. You can prevent that. You can prevent that. In the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm about to pray. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. I'm, I'm, I'm set. I'm set. I'm set. I'm on my course. I'm on my course. I'm on my course. I'm on my course. Green, man, you're, you're running well. You're running well. Don't be hindered. Keep doing what is right. Woo! Keep doing what is right. Don't let them, don't let any of these stuff, don't, don't let your friends move you. Don't let your buddies in the street move you. I learned to ignore my street buddies. I learned to ignore them. They, to ignore them. They pick at you for doing right. Ignore them. Family members that didn't encourage me to stay in holiness, I ignored them too. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I was in college in Fayetteville. I had a loved one, and I went to visit her. God knows I didn't have nothing. And she was well off, and she had money. And I went to visit her, and she fed me good. But she gave me advice that was contrary to holiness. You know what I did? I stopped going. I never went back. I never went back. And there were many times I was in that dorm hungry and I had no money. But what was not an option was going over there. She wasn't mean to me. She didn't fuss me out. She probably don't know how I took what she told me. But what she told me was contrary to holiness. And you know what? 
I couldn't be moved by it. Not even hunger pain could move me to go back over there because I had a Jerusalem. God had put a Jerusalem in my spirit. And, and I'm still bound for Mount Zion. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Way out yes, Lord. on a hill. Oh, and if anybody oh, make it, surely I will. Yes, yes, Good God Almighty. Father, touch our minds, Lord. Touch our hearts, Lord. Sure up our minds. Gird up our minds. Gird up our spirits. Make us strong, Lord. Regardless to how we feel. Regardless to what the doctor says. Regardless to how things look. Make us strong, Jesus. Jesus, sure up our minds. Jesus, strengthen these men. Strengthen these women. Strengthen the saints of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, my mind, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep me with a do right mind. Keep me with a made up mind. Hallelujah, Jesus. Keep me with a mind to praise you. Keep me with a mind to thank you. In the name of Jesus, good God Almighty. Not going to let anybody come in and clutter up my mind, clutter up my head mess up my way of thinking I started with Jesus and I'm going through somebody praise him right now give him praise saints Lord heal in the church Lord deliver in the church Lord deliver in the church Lord deliver in the church the mind of oh God touch our minds touch our minds touch our minds touch our hearts touch our spirits in the name of Jesus, give us strength, Lord, to be that Christian that you've called us to be. In the name of Jesus, now give God praise. Give him praise in him. Praise him for your mind. Praise him for your strength. Praise him for your ability. The ability he's given you to ignore the devil and to stop being so easily caught off guard, so easily frightened. Paul said, be not soon shaken in your mind. The devil is a liar. God's got my back. Jesus is holding me up. These things don't move me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When, and I'm done, when they passed the law, they said, King, they passed the law that you cannot pray to anybody but never to Nessa for the next 90 days. Was that what it was? Was it 60, 90 days? Daniel was unmoved. He did not increase his prayers to four times a day. And he didn't decrease them to two times a day. But the Bible said he did like he had always been doing. Open the window. Pray toward Jerusalem three times a day as at before. You know what? It didn't move him. It didn't move him. Some churches go through a total different identity change every six months. They are constantly shifting. They are never marked by consistency. They are constantly moved. There's something to be said for standing on what you believe. They done got rid of their choirs and everything else because that's the way they're doing it now. Then when those fads change, they'll switch again. 
And Sister Shay didn't switch again. But you ought to be able to say, we're not moved. I'll give you, I'll tell you why you shouldn't be moved. See, the devil comes in, I'm, I'm done. I talk, sometimes it's hard to shut this thing down. I'm a prophet. The devil comes in, I'm a seer. That's better. Incrementally. He came in at first with dressed down Dave. Dressed down Dave. You ever, you ever dressed down Sunday this Sunday? You dressed down. Remember that? Remember that was popular? I, I, we never did it. Ever. One of the reasons I didn't, because I'm not a faddish person. I don't get my marching orders from everybody else. The Lord made me the pastor of this church. Other reason is that a thing has to make sense to me. If you get saved, they told me when I got saved that if you serve the Lord, he'll make you look like somebody. When I time the Lord make me look like somebody, I didn't want to dress down. I wanted, I wanted to look like somebody. God, I want to look like somebody. But knowing what the devil did, he sold blind preachers on dress down days. Now most churches don't dress up at all. But the preacher who was not moved didn't get affected by that stuff. And I can go down the list of fads that have come and gone. And I could feel sometimes the pressure from various ones who felt that we should, well, you know, ain't going to hurt nothing. Uh-uh. We're holding this church. We're gonna, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. These churches who are giving up Sunday nights, watch what happens. In time, midweek will be gone. And, and, and where it's headed to is an abbreviated Sunday morning service. 30 minutes tops. It's all said and done. That's the way the devil comes. This is why when, when these winds blow, you can't be moved. If there's anything that characterizes our great community is that we are a people who are constantly in flux. We're always changing. Whatever the latest fad is, there we go. And we do it in excess. There we go. There we go. And when you're constantly in flux, you do never identify. You never develop an identity. You never develop self-awareness. You don't know who you are. In order to find out, you never find yourself looking in the mirror. You find yourself watching television and seeing what someone else is doing. When the Lord wants us to find ourselves looking in the mirror. Amen. God bless you. You can praise the Lord as you go back to your seats. I shall not be moved.